Welcome to Washington Hospital Today, dedicated to informing residents about health care topics and issues. Through programs featuring community forums and free health and wellness classes, our goal is to empower community members with the information needed to make informed health decisions. Washington Hospital has been providing health care to the residents of the Washington Township Healthcare District for the past 60 years. Today's presenter is Desiree Moravian, RN. Desiree is a registered nurse and a certified diabetes educator at Washington Hospital Healthcare System. So welcome everyone. As Luann said, my name is Desi Morabian. I'm one of the nurses at the Outpatient Diabetes Program. Luann works inpatient and we work together though, as you can see, collaborating on this. And I learned a lot doing this presentation. So first I divided it into two parts. First, we're gonna talk about traveling and then we're gonna talk about disaster preparedness. I kind of picked this topic because I figured people are going to start traveling and thinking about traveling at this point. And, you know, you have to kind of anticipate what you're going to need. So you're not stuck in a situation without your supply. So it does take a little bit of preparation ahead of time. I made a resource list with links for different sources online. So there's one for TSA, one for um, taking control of your diabetes. CDC, there's one from our professional association, the diabeteseducator.org. There's one from finding English speakers abroad. And then there's one for people who have type one diabetes and how to handle the TSA. So we're going to talk about planning ahead, travel preparation. This is like probably the most important part. You want to think through your needs. You want to anticipate how many days you're going to be gone, how many strips you're going to need, how much, how many pills you're going to need, how much insulin you're going to need. Is your one pen going to be enough or do you need to bring a couple pens or, or syringes and vials? Whatever, you know, you need to kind of think through all this stuff. Also, you want to think about your meter and it's suggested to bring two meters with batteries just in case something happens. Also, if somebody has a pump or a CGMs, the tubing or the sensors or batteries, you want to have backup supplies. Also, you want to try to, uh, you know, next time you go to your doctor, you want a few things from your doctor. First of all, writing, a, have the doctor write a letter stating, you know, this is if you're going to fly predominantly, but a letter stating that you have diabetes and these are the supplies you use and the medications you take. You need to have these things with you. You want to try and get some prescriptions from your doctor so you can have them in case you lose your medications somehow that you can go to a local pharmacy and get more. So in some cases, you may need to stock up a little bit I had to email one of my colleagues about how people can comp compile, accumulate strips and medications and insulin. So she suggested to build up your supplies, keep your su prescriptions current. Don't miss picking up any refills. Have, so you have plenty, you know, think about this ahead of time. Also ask your doctor's office if they have any samples, especially if you're planning a trip. You don't want this stuff sitting around. You want to, I mean, if you're planning a trip, then you would want to have this because your prescription may change or the dose may change. So you want to try to do this in light of an upcoming trip. Another thing, so when you go see your doctor, you want to get a letter, you want to get your prescriptions, have a copy of your prescriptions, you want to ask for samples, and you also want to talk about activities that you're planning on doing that could affect your blood sugars going up going down? How are you going to treat your highs and lows? If you're doing anything physical, strenuous, hopefully you're in shape and you've been practicing like hiking or anything that might be exhilarating. Let's say you go on a hot air balloon ride or you're sailing or there's changes in air pressure or anything like that. You probably want to talk to your doctor about how to treat those highs and lows in, in those cases and what you should take with you. Also, if you're traveling abroad, you may want to go to a travel clinic 
And make sure, you know, if you might need hepatitis shots or, or whatever, shots, uh, TB tests might be required depending on where you're going and how safe their water is and all those kind of things. So it's worthwhile to go to a travel clinic, make sure your vaccines are up to date, pull out your vaccine cards for maybe you need some boosters or something. So it's worthwhile to pull your cards out, your vaccination sheets. Okay, so the next step is to start gathering your supplies. Oh, also, if someone's on an insulin pump, well, first of all, you want your medications to be in bottles with labels. If someone's on an insulin pump, you want to have uh, extra batteries, syringes, and vials, just in case, backup stuff, backup supplies. Also, you want to have a meter in case your CGM doesn't work. You want to try to have two, you know, depending on what kind of trip you're going on, you know, this is Murphy's law. So, you know, if you're not prepared, it's, it's possible that something is going to happen. So you may want to have, think about having two glucose meters with extra batteries and strips and some alcohol swaps, because you may not be able to go wash your hands when you want to test. You also want to have some um, freezer packs to keep your insulin cold. And you want to have some socks and shoes that are loose, that aren't going to be binding on your feet and shoes that you can take on and off really easily. So if you're flying, these are some things to think about ahead of time. So this is if you're going in an airplane, you want to think about ordering a special meal that fits your meal plan. You want to, you know, see if you need to do that ahead of time. You want to get this TSA notification card, and I'm going to show a picture of it in the next couple slides here. You're going to see a picture of it. It's blue, and you can download it from the internet. I think it's under TSA Cares. But you're going to, I'm going to show a picture of it. You can print it from your computer and then just fill it out and keep it with you. It's blue. You may want to think about signing up for TSA PreCheck so you won't need to take your medications out of your bag. Uh, you won't have to take off your shoes or uh, take out your computer. There is a fee for TSA PreCheck, but it's for five years. It's um, $85 for five years. You will also need to bring your real ID. I think these are going to start to be required. I think it's so you can come back to the country or you might need it to get on the plane. If you're going overseas, some things to keep in mind. You may have a problem with your maybe your debit card or your credit card. So you want to bring another card. You want to have an alternative card. You want to have more than one just in case, right? You may want to call your credit card at company ahead of time and tell them that you're going to be going away in the time period you're going to be going away to avoid them suspecting any fraud and turning off your card. So you want to call them ahead of time. You want to learn how to say, I have diabetes, or I need some sugar in the language of the country you're going to, you know, I need some sugar, you know, where can I go? And, you know, if someone, especially if someone's prone, uh, they're either on insulin or sulfonylureas of getting low blood sugars. So there's an association it's of English speaking doctors. It's called the International Association for Medical Assistance to Travelers. That's this link on the bottom, IAMAT.org. And that would give you a list of doctors that are in different countries that speak English. Thankfully, we have the internet and you may be able to uh, look up a town you're going to and look for local medical facilities as well or clinics that are near to where you're going to be in case you have a problem. And now we're getting closer to going. Now you have to start kind of packing and think about how you're gonna carry all these supplies. So you wanna have the things that are listed above a couple of meters with some extra batteries and strips. And like I said, even if someone's using a CGM, you want to have a uh, backup meter just in case if anyone has their insulin, if they have a Frezza, you know, the inhaled insulin, needles, alcohol swabs, all those kind of things for testing and their insulin supplies. You want to have some backup batteries, as I said, pump um, tubing or the, the sensors or the transmitters or whatever you need to have. You want to have extra. So that's why I'm saying at the beginning that you have to calculate how many days you're going, you know, how much tubing you need. And some people say double it because you never know when something will go wrong. You know, the tubing won't work or your needle gets bent or something, you're in a bad position or something like that. 
You want to have your prescription meds in bottles with the mm -hmm. labels on them. You know, you can't just keep them in your little pill boxes. You need to keep them in the bottles. You want to have a glucagon kit if you're, I didn't put it on here, but if you're on insulin, you may want to have a glucagon kit just in case. And there's uh, different kinds. There's a new one on the market. It's been on a couple of years. It's called Baximi. It's a nasal spray. Also, there's Gvo. And for getting lows, there's you can have some quick acting carbohydrates for treating low blood sugars. Bring whatever you glucose tabs, candies, just even packets of sugar, the small packets, honey, you know, those honey sticks, you can bring those. There's that goo stuff that you squirt in your mouth. So just, may, you know, if you are on insulin or sulfonylurea, you know, it's possible you're going to get low. So you want to have your, your quick acting carbs, and then you want to have some complex carbs as well. That would be to keep your blood sugars from going down. So you, some granola bars, those cheese crackers, peanut butter crackers, you know, those packets that have the crackers with the cheese or the peanut butter in the middle little sandwiches, those cracker sandwich things, trail mix, um, nuts, veggies, and dip things that, you know, depending on how you're traveling, you know, think about some snacks you want to have around just in case you may want to think about getting a diabetes med alert bracelet or a necklace, or I don't know, some people have stuff like that tattooed. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> also maybe an ID card. You're going to see this TSA card in a little bit, but those kind of things. Also a first aid kit, depending on, like I said, what kind of traveling you're having, or just bring medications for nausea or diarrhea, because you want to avoid getting dehydrated, any pain medicine, cold medicine, allergy medicine, also sunscreen, band-aids, sterile gauze, and tape. Well, that's supposed to say tape. And insect repellent would also be another thing. I guess I didn't put it on there. You know, think about those kind of medical things, over-the-counter kind of things you may need to bring to take care of yourself. And as I said before, have your doctor's contact information, you know, a letter or some kind of form with your doctor's contact, name of the medications you're on, and have your prescriptions all together. And also something to help you go to sleep at night, maybe use essential oils. You might have some little travel candle or your melatonin or, or something like that to help you go to sleep as well. Packing, as I said, you want to think about having two sets of everything and having somebody else carry your stuff for you. Just in case you lose your bag or your carry on bag, put your insulin in there because it, the cold might get too cold and freeze the insulin. You want to avoid that, but you want to have two sets of supplies if you, if possible, because like I said, if it's possible that if you don't have something, it's that you're going to need it. Right. So you want to try and, and think about that. You want to put the insulin in a carry on because cold and pressure changes can damage or affect it. So you want it to be with you in the airplane and at your seat. Okay. So here you are, we are on the plane. You want to think about when you're on the plane, you want to maybe have a smaller bag with you with your a meter test strips, depending on how long this flight is, right? If it's across an ocean or to India or China or someplace like that, that's a long trip. So you're going to want to check your blood sugars because you're going to be eating different foods at different times. Think about all those supplies you're going to need. So you're going to want a smaller bag for that test strips, meter, your pump, or your continuous glucose monitor supplies. Now you're at the airport. So you've packed everything. You have your supplies in two bags. You have your little bag for the airport airplane. We're, we're about ready to go. So supposedly if you have a pump or a CGM, the scanners do not affect the insulin or meds. So that's something good to know. But this is what this TSA card looks like. It's blue. As I said, you can download it from the internet from TSA. So here it says TSA notification card for individuals with disabilities and medical conditions. So this way you can give it to the TSA agent. So they know you write down on here. If you're wearing a device, a pump, or a continuous glucose monitor, you may have some insulin with you, some needles, but you need to have those needles, you know, those kind of things, your Lancets, let them know that you have those because you have diabetes 
And you have your letter from the doctor with your treatment plan on it, including your medications that are on there. You may want to ask for a hand inspection by the TSA agent. Someone is, has a, an insulin pump. Uh, the pump may need to be disconnected, which is fine, just to get through the inspection. And then you can put it back on. So now you're in the airport and you're eating different food, right? Either you're going to have your snacks, but you may want to save them. And there's all these little places to get food at. Some things you can do ahead of time is look up the menus or look them up on your phone. So you have to think about, you're not going to be moving too much unless you do purposely walk in the airport while you're waiting. But in general, you want to try to reduce your carb intake because you're not going to be as active. You know, a lot of that food is fried. So you want to try to avoid the fried food and stick with some salads that have protein in them, chicken or fish. Fajitas are fine, but you want to skip the rice or tortillas. Bean, beans are okay. They have fiber in them, but the rice and tortillas are going to break down more quickly and make your blood sugars go up. And you might be a little excited too, because you're going to travel and you just had to go through the TSA thing. You know, if you haven't traveled for a while, this may all stir up some stress for you and raise your blood sugars. Eggs or omelets are fine. And if you're going to have burgers, you may want to think about getting them wrapped in lettuce or just have some sandwiches. Some snacks to have would be no yogurt or nuts. You want to skip the dried fruits because they're concentrated sweets and you tend to eat a lot of them. And so those can make your blood sugars go up as well. After all this work, you finally make it to the plane. So some things to be aware of is um, pressure changes can affect the delivery of the insulin, especially when the plane is descending, the pump may deliver more insulin than you expect. So because the pressure is changing. So you may want to, uh, if you're in a pump support group, you may want to talk to people in your pump support group or talk to the pump company or check with your doctor about that. And so you may, like when you descend, you know, they say on the plane, okay, we're going to start descending so many minutes. You may need to set back your basal rate. If that's the case, you may need to check on that. So you may want to find out people who've had experience with this. Then when you get there, you want to check your insulin for any changes. It may have little white flocculations in it, or it might be the color may have changed, or there may be some stringiness to it. So those insulins may not be as effective or may clog up your pump or the syringe or whatever you use to deliver the insulin. So you may want to double check your insulin when you get there. And also, since you are traveling, you may be changing time zones, you're eating different foods, you want to check your blood sugar more often. Also too, especially if you're stressed, you may need to reduce your medications that you need to, this is something that you might need to ask your doctor about. Also set your alarm for your medications if you are changing time zones. You want to stay active if you can on the plane. You want to try to reduce the swelling. You want to try and um, not get too settled and have all your blood sugar start going up. So you want to try to stay active a little bit, go up and down the aisle. And then you want to flex and point your feet to reduce the swelling. And you want to wear some light compression socks to reduce the swelling. So you don't want them to be like those tight athletic ones, but you want to wear something you all may have some place where you buy your shoes and you know your socks. So see if they have some light compression socks to reduce the swelling. But try to walk up and down the aisle. That's a little challenging because of all the security issues, but do what you can. Now we're gonna talk about people who are going in a car. Not everybody's gonna fly. Again, um, so you're gonna have your cooler. So again, you wanna bring some healthy snacks, nuts, fresh fruit, sandwiches, yogurt, maybe some vegetables and dip just to have in the car, preferably low calorie kind of things. You want to avoid cookies and things like that <laughs> because you're going to be bored and you're going to want to eat them all, which is something I've done myself. So you want to, you know, try to pre-think what are healthy snacks to bring and also bring a lot of water because you want to avoid getting dehydrated. So you want to bring water and have it with you. You may get stuck somewhere in a traffic jam or get lost or something like that. So you want to have some stuff with you. You want to keep your testing supplies and meds, including the insulin, out of direct sunlight. 
So that's really important. You don't want your insulin or your meter to get overheated. So it needs to kind of be in a cooler, but not directly on the ice because you don't want it to freeze. It just needs to stay cool, a little bit insulated away from the heat and the sunlight and on the beach. You don't want it on the beach if it's, you know, where it's sunny. Okay, so now you're here. You've reached your destination. So your blood sugar may be out of range for a few days, but you want to check your blood sugar more often. Your blood sugar should adjust. You want to check your blood sugar more often and bring some wet wipes or alcohol wipes to wipe your finger off with so you don't get any false readings. And you want to treat your highs and lows as the way you normally you know, the way you do them. And that would be something to talk about, as I said earlier, to talk about with your doctor. And then if you're going to do any hiking, biking, or things like that, you want to bring lots of water, your testing supplies, and sunscreen. Because even sunscreen, if you don't feel good, that can whack out your blood sugars as well. So you want to stay protected and not get dehydrated from the sun. You want to have, you know, like a fanny pack or something like that, right? Or, or a backpack, a small backpack, a day pack. You have water in there, your meter, fast acting carbs, glucose tabs. I don't know we talked about honey sticks or the goo or whatever, the peanut butter crackers, granola bars, and then people using their have a pump, they might want to use their pens instead of a pump. If they're going to be really active, they may need to reduce their basal rates and just cover their meals. That's something to talk about. It just depends on how much insulin somebody's on. And also have a first aid kit. I made a, I found a picture here, band-aids, tape, gauze, things to clean your skin off with, wipes of some sort, maybe some blister adhesive things that you put on your ankles and your toes, whatever. So you don't get blisters or pain medication, those kind of things, diarrhea stuff, nausea medication. For people who use insulin, this can be very exasperating, you know, the fluctuations it would be a good idea to think about how the heat may affect your blood sugars. Ask other people, find out what kind of adjustments you should think about taking just your insulin doses and then the food you eat. So that's the end of the travel section. It's all just kind of common sense things. So these are some things to talk about with your doctor. If you're going on some kind of trip, that's a little different than your normal daily routine and anticipate what you're going to need. Okay, so disaster. This is kind of the emotionally, the opposite end of traveling <laughs> for the most part. So I didn't really think about that till just now. But, um, and if any of you were here at, during the Loma Prieta earthquake, the second picture may look familiar to you when the Bay Bridge uh, collapsed. Most recently, you know, let's think about some disasters that, we have in our area, we have had fires, earthquakes, floods. They're not so much fun to think about, but you do want to be prepared for them. Some other situations might be storms or flooding, loss of electricity. That would just be in your own house. So you just want to have things prepared in advance. So I just listed a couple sites like the CDC and FEMA. They have information in different languages. I even saw American Sign Language on there to help people get prepared. So that's something you can let other people know. So there's the FEMA, FEMA.gov, emergency.cdc.gov, slash preparedness, ready.gov. There's a lot of other lists online that you can find. So we're going to look at this video here. Um, you want to get a bin like this. And some of the main issues though is you want to prevent dehydration and you want to have a source of food with you that has sugar in it to keep you from getting low. So those are the two main issues. So you want to have your fast acting carbs and you want to try to have enough water for you so you don't get dehydrated. So we're going to watch this video. Here it is. Emergencies come in all sizes. They may impact your entire community or just affect the lives of you and your immediate family. Either way, if you or someone you care for has diabetes, it's important to have an emergency plan. As part of your planning, prepare a portable kit that includes essential information and supplies that you would need during an event that might force you to leave home, disrupt your usual routine, 
and limit your access to healthcare supplies. Assemble the kit in a waterproof and insulated container to protect its contents from moisture, heat, and cold. Pack it with the following items. A list of what type of diabetes you have and details of all your medical conditions such as allergies and any prior surgery. Include details of any medications you are taking with pharmacy contact information, active prescription information, and number of eligible remaining refills. Also, provide specific information about any previous diabetes medications you have taken and the reasons that you stopped taking them. Finally, as part of this list, write down the contact information for all of your health care providers. You should also pack a letter from your diabetes health care providers with all your most recent diabetes medication regimen. This is especially important if you are taking insulin. Note your most recent laboratory results especially A1C kidney and liver tests. If possible, pack a 30-day supply of all medications taken by mouth or injection for diabetes as well as all other medical conditions. If prescribed by your physician, an emergency kit for severe hypoglycemia is essential, as are blood glucose testing supplies and, if possible, two glucose meters with extra batteries. Be sure to periodically check expiration dates on your hypoglycemia emergency kit. Place a small cooler in the kit large enough to hold four refreezable gel packs for storing insulin and unused injectable medications. So when you are ready, you can just add them to the kit. Do not use dry ice and be sure not to freeze the medication. Also be sure to pack empty plastic bottles or sharps containers for syringes, needles, and lancets. Be sure to include one or more sources of carbohydrates to treat hypoglycemic reactions. These could be glucose tablets, juice boxes, glucose gel, regular soda, sugar, honey, or hard candy. Additionally, Take at least a two-day supply of non-perishable foods such as peanut butter or cheese crackers or meal replacement shakes or bars, as well as a three-day supply of bottled water. It's also a good idea to remember a pen or pencil and a notepad to record your blood sugar, any other test results, or any signs of symptoms that might suggest medical problems. Finally. Place first aid supplies such as bandages, cotton swabs, dressings, and topical medications into your kit. Put it in a safe place where you can easily find it. And remember, don't pack your insulin until you're ready to go. Now enjoy the peace of mind that comes from knowing you've taken a major step to help protect yourself and your family in case of an emergency. So that was from the MyDiabetesEmergencyPlan.com site. And that's kind of easy to remember, MyDiabetesEmergencyPlan.com. Okay, so you're going to have your bin all prepared. So you're going to do this checklist. So this DiabetesDisasterResponse.org site has this checklist that's really helpful to do ahead of time. Like the, the issues related to traveling, you also wanna make sure your vaccines are up to date. So you should pull out your card and ask your doctor about it. You wanna to talk to your family and make sure you have a meeting place and write it down and include it in the kit because that's something you might forget about later. You may wanna have a medical ID bracelet in case you're evacuated to a relief shelter Let's say you pass out or something and people need to find out what's going on with you. It would help to have that bracelet. And if you have children, you want to write down the school they go to, the address and telephone number. And you want to keep all this up to date if you can remember to do this. You know, your kids change school, you move and you need to make a new meeting place, those kind of things. Obviously, this checklist is on my resource sheet. I just want you to know what it looks like. So this is from diabetesdisasterresponse.com. 
All right, so this is the tricky part, gathering 14 day or so supplies of medications. First of all, we talked about getting some samples from your doctors. I don't know how well that's going to go because not too many reps have been going around during COVID. I know they haven't been coming to our office. Maybe they've been going to the doctor's offices and you can get some samples from them. You can call some local pharmacies for information on prescription assistance programs. So call the pharmacy and then you can call the pharmaceutical companies themselves. So Lily and Novo Nordis have customer service help for these kind of things for the insulin. So Lily and Novo Nordis and Sanofi, they make some of the insulins. You can call them LifeScan, may be able to give you some meter supplies. And then there's some other programs. Needy Meds is here, freemedicinefoundation.com and rxassist.org are some of the sources to check. And you, you know, so you kind of get the gist of this, like you, you go to the manufacturer and try and find some other agencies that maybe collect medications and have them for emergencies. And they're on the CDC site as well. From the video we saw, this is their emergency plan list that they make. Some things that are added. So we always talk about protecting your feet. And let's say you are in a fire or a flood, you want to make sure you've got some sturdy shoes and socks on to protect your feet. And also associated with that is making sure that you're checking your feet. You want to check your feet every day for any cuts, sores, or blisters and treat any injuries you have. Because we know that if you have any impaired circulation or your blood sugars are high, you're at a higher chance of getting some injuries to your feet and having wound healing issues. So you want to make sure you are checking your feet or have someone remind you to check your feet. You know, that's kind of one of those problem solving things. You want to have your latest lab results in that kit, your A1C, as she said, kidney and liver function tests. And think about when you're planning all this out, think about how are you going to do all this without any water or power? So you need to bring water with you or, you know, maybe you have candles, flashlights, those kind of things. So you can be able to do your treatment as much as you can. As I said, there's a lot of lists online. And as far as what you're gathering, some of them are similar items that are in the travel section. These are challenging situations and conditions. So you wanna just kind of think the worst, I guess, and hope for the best as they say, right? So as far as expectations go, I took, you know, here's a picture of, of a shelter. You know, you might be in a place like this. This is an emotional time for people. So we know that stress, emotions can cause your blood sugars to fluctuate. So you expect them to fluctuate and try to manage them, know what you do to make them go down. If, if you get high, low blood sugars, what do you do to, to bring it up and talk to your providers? You might find something online about people who have gone through disasters, who have diabetes and how they manage them. So as I said, these are all general guidelines, but like our diabetes education, we personalize it. So you may think, okay, well, what works for me? And that's the important thing. And those are things that you need to bring. People have their little, little idiosyncrasies of what they do. So those are fine. Just make sure you account for those for your disaster supplies. So you may want to talk to your doctor or your diabetes educator to prepare. Think about these things you need to prepare for. And they may have some supplies for you, as I mentioned before. And then you may want to you know, talk with your family or your neighbors and friends to help you anticipate or problem solve your needs. As I said, you know, everyone's got their idiosyncratic things or, you know, just for everybody, for the whole family. You know, you may be the most prepared person out there because you're gonna have your bin already with all your stuff in it, as well as the first aid kit and melt water and your sharps container. And, you know, you're gonna be the pre most prepared one out there.